All right, I want to talk about the Big 12. Texas Tech did Colorado the hugest favor beating Iowa State this past weekend. Colorado is now tied for second place in the Big 12 with Iowa State because they both have one loss. But the Big 12 is going to get really sticky. I don't really know that anybody's going to beat BYU. BYU has Utah, Kansas, Arizona State, and Houston. I think if anybody's going to beat them with these last four games, it's going to be Arizona State. Kansas might show up. Kansas is liable to show up um, every so often. Kansas is liable to make it a game, make it a close game. BYU has shown that they could win close games. But if I was going to pick any team to beat them, I would pick Arizona State. Houston might challenge them, but that game is going to be in Provo. Uh, I can see Arizona State getting a win, but that would only give BYU their first loss of the season, right? Now, when we talk about Colorado's football schedule, Colorado's got Texas Tech next week. Colorado's got Texas Tech, they got Utah, they got Kansas, and they got Oklahoma State. Now, I think, I think there's Colorado, if Colorado wins out, they're automatically going to the Big 12 championship game. Even though they and Iowa State both only have one loss, Colorado would win the tiebreaker right now. Kansas State did, ultimately in my opinion, Kansas State did Colorado the biggest favor. I think Colorado is in a great position, but I also think the race is not done and college football is all about madness. That's what makes college football great. That's what makes it exciting. Colorado goes to Texas Tech next week, and so they're going to be challenged because automatically it's an away game. It's going to be hostile. And Texas Tech has two losses in the conference. Texas Tech needs to wreak more havoc so that they get a chance to compete for the Big 12 championship. So now, if Texas Tech wins out, let's look at Texas Tech's schedule. If Texas Tech wins out, they just beat Iowa State, which is a huge win. Huge win. Now, let's say they beat Colorado, they beat Oklahoma State, and then they beat West Virginia. They're going to need some favors along the way. Now, Colorado is my favorite for Big 12 champion. I love Deion Sanders. I've been a fan of Deion Sanders since I was young. Um, I love watching Shador and Travis work together on offense. I love seeing what Travis is doing on defense. When I played high school football, I played both ways as well. So seeing what Travis is able to do on the college football level is special. Now, here's what here are the challenges Colorado's going to face when it comes to them trying to get into the Big 12 championship game, trying to overcome the challenges that they have in these next four games. Colorado faces three of five teams who lead the Big 12 in interceptions. Texas Tech, Kansas, and Oklahoma State. One of those teams are ranked third in sacks. That's Kansas. And you know, Colorado has given up the most sacks in all of the Big 12. Maybe even all of college football. I'm going to look that up. And one of those teams are tied for second in forced fumbles. That's Texas Tech. And four of the top 10 running backs in the Big 12 are on these four teams. So you got Taj Brooks with Texas Tech, Makah Bernard with Utah, Devin Neal with Kansas, and Ollie Gordon with Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State has been an absolute mess, but they got athletes and they got Ollie Gordon. And I think Colorado's weakness is the run game both when it comes to them running the ball and when it comes to them stopping the ball, stopping the run. Now, they've been doing a pretty good job this season when it comes to stopping the run. When they go up against Taj Brooks, Taj Brooks is a bigger, he's not like DJ Giddens in the sense where he's going to be able to be as swift as him, but he's powerful and he's big. So I think he can absolutely keep Texas Tech on the field. Texas Tech doesn't necessarily focus on winning the time of possession battle. But if they do try to come into this game and win the time of possession battle, if they actually have a game plan to win the time of possession battle on the ground and then go to their big wide receivers when it's time, Josh Kelly is number three and number five is Caleb Douglas. Caleb Douglas is 6'4", 205 pounds. Josh Kelly is 6'1", 195. These, this is an ugly matchup when it comes to the wide receivers because 6'4", 205, what DB... I guess with Colorado, they're going to put eight. Let's take a look at eight on Colorado. DJ McKinney, yep, 6'2", 190. Travis Hunter is 6'1", 185. I would want Travis Hunter on, on Kelly because I think Kelly is the receiver that is, he's their leading receiver, first of all, but he's also their most elusive wide receiver. And I would personally want DJ McKinney, yeah, I would want DJ McKinney on Douglas. 6'4. I don't want I don't want any matchups where 
Preston Hodge is on a 6'4 Douglas and they're trying to get the jump, the jump ball. Or um, I, I just don't want that. I think Texas Tech is absolutely a threat when it comes to giving Colorado a run for their money. I'm personally going to go with Colorado, though. I think Colorado got their mind right. They got another week off here just this past weekend that really gives them time to rest and recover. And I think Texas Tech coming off that big victory to Iowa State. I think they are going to be eager to try to get this win. They're going to be at home. But I think the fact that they're going to be at home, but the fact that Colorado has been playing better football more consistently than Texas Tech, the fact that Colorado is second in the Big 12 in getting sacks, I think they're going to be able to keep their offense on the field. Texas Tech hasn't really shown that they're a team who can win the time of possession battle. They haven't shown that they're the kind of team who can scheme to win the time of possession battle. And their defense does not tackle well. They don't tackle well in the secondary. Texas Tech is a team that, to me, is more so flash than substance. A lot of people look at Colorado and try to prescribe them with that. That's who you guys are. You guys are just all flash. But no, Colorado has been getting better every single week. But Texas Tech does not do that good of a job of getting pressure on the quarterback. All of the teams that got pressure on Shador, that really put a lot of pressure on him, they either beat Colorado or they kept it close. Baylor, North Dakota State, Nebraska, Kansas State. Putting pressure on Shador, throwing the offense off, keeping them off schedule, getting them in third and 15s. This is when Colorado is going to start to struggle because Colorado's best defense is their offense. They score a lot. They can score a lot. Shador, in my opinion, is the best quarterback in the Big 12, maybe even the best quarterback in all of college football. He has been protecting the football. He's thrown as many touchdowns as the other leading quarterback in college in, in, in the Big 12 right now, quarterback from TCU, but he's thrown less interceptions. He's had one less football game than that quarterback got less attempts so he's a more efficient quarterback so Colorado's a real threat on offense ultimately and I don't really think there's any team that has lined up that has been able to stop them when they're on offense right now I don't think that's going to be any exception when it comes to Texas Tech because I don't see the threat I saw the threat when it came to Kansas State the whole way through and through I saw the threat I think when Colorado goes to play against Kansas that's a game that you're going to be expecting them to win that could be closer than it should be. That can feel closer than you want it to because Kansas has some players. They just clearly have some bad coaching going on. They clearly aren't able to utilize the players that they have so that they can be successful. But this Colorado football team can absolutely get to the Big 12 championship and they need to be mindful of the road that's ahead. If the tiebreaker was breaking in, let's say, Iowa State's direction. Iowa State, their schedule is extremely interesting because Iowa State is going to be playing against Kansas State in their last game of the season. And I think Kansas State is a much better football team than people give them credit for. And I think Kansas State will beat Iowa State in that last football game. And let's be, I mean, Iowa State got Kansas coming up. They got Cincinnati coming up. They got Utah. And then they got Kansas State. They could mess around and lose to Cincinnati. They could mess around and lose to Kansas State. And I have them losing to Kansas State. I absolutely think Kansas State will beat them. So if Kansas State beats them, Kansas State will have given Colorado a loss, humbled Colorado, and then at the same time helped Colorado get into the Big 12 championship game. Crazy. I'm looking ahead. I understand that patience is important. I understand that Colorado needs to earn this and they need to get there. But if I get a Colorado, if I get a Colorado BYU Big 12 championship game, I got Colorado winning that game. Even though BYU, if I'm not mistaken, is leading the Big 12 in interceptions, I think it will be a great matchup because I think they're a very well-balanced team. They're almost in the middle of the pack when it comes to all of the stats in the Big 12. There's, they're a team that is so slept on. They just do everything really well. They don't do one thing incredibly well. They do it all really well. And they just mix it up really well. Keep you on your toes. Keep you on your heels. And just get, get you going back and forth. But if I get if, if we can get that kind of Big 12 championship game, I'm giving the nod to Colorado. And I got Colorado getting that first round by in the college football playoff and absolutely shocking the world. Just get to the playoff. Just get there. 
everything from that point on, free game. Let's see what happens from that point on. I think getting a guy like Travis Hunter in the college football playoff healthy, I think that's 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 game changing automatically. Yes, for the for the program in Colorado, but I think he and Shador would make the kind of plays that can absolutely win them games moving forward. And I think they've only been getting better. Last but not least, their road to the Big 12 championship game, they're going to have to earn it. They got to win every single game. They cannot lose any of these games. They're not in the position BYU is in. BYU can lose a game. They'll still be number one in the country in, in the Big 12. I was going to talk about the Heisman. Uh, Travis Hunter went out on, he, you know, he's, he's, it almost feels like he's campaigning. He was on the set of game day and, you know, talking about the Heisman. Um, had his flag, high as men for him and Shador. I just wanted to say, I, I absolutely think Travis Hunter is a Heisman candidate because of what he's doing on both sides of the ball. He's dominating on offense. He's playing incredibly well on defense. As for Shador, you know, there's been talk lately about whether or not he's a Heisman candidate. Um, Dion said that, you know, he, he suggested that people aren't really talking about Shador as a Heisman candidate because he's his son and people don't like him. I don't think that's the case. I think he just, I don't I don't think his campaigning, I don't think the way he goes about campaigning and representing himself is indicative of what Heisman voters like seeing. Um, Dion is saying it's because he's his son. That's not the case. It's not because he's your offspring. I just think it's the way he campaigns, the way he carries himself. People don't fancy him as a face of college football. I don't think that should be the case. But I, I, that's what's happening. Everything is politics at the end of the day. Your high school football team, there's politics as far as who gets to play sometimes. When you go to college, it, it, only, gets, it only gets heightened. Politics is politics. Hollywood is politics. It's, there's always politics when it, when it comes to picking the person who's this and who's that. And, you know, If Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders are highs men, then why, why weren't both of them on the set of game day? Let's be real. Does Travis Hunter have a PR rep that Shador doesn't have access to? No, that's not the case. Game day, ask for Travis. Why didn't game day ask for Travis and Shador? There's an energy. There's an energy in the air. I mean, even the way Shador carries himself in his interviews, I think he's just, he's not really trying to appeal to anybody. I think he is very to himself in a sense. I don't think people see, people see baller when it comes to Shador, but they're not really classifying him as leader. So that's my take. Look, Colorado, Shador Sanders, Travis Hunter, I think these guys have done a fantastic job this season. The entire squad has done a fantastic job this season, but you got to win out. Y'all can't lose none of these games. Y'all got to show up every single Saturday, and I will be here to support you with my voice. Texas Tech is next. It's one game at a time. Just based on what I see when I look ahead, it looks like it's supposed to be easy because it ain't no Kansas State on the roster. And none of these teams are ranked. But Colorado almost lost to North Dakota State. They weren't ranked. Colorado lost to Nebraska. They weren't ranked. Colorado almost lost to Baylor. They weren't ranked. Now, you just got to win out. You just got to win out. You can't take none of these teams for granted. You can't tame, take their record for granted. Kansas has a terrible record. Can't take them for granted. Utah, who knows if Cam Rising shows back up? Probably not. But you still can't take them for granted. Kansas, they get a ton of sacks on the quarterback. They're one of the top teams in the Big 12 at getting sacks on the quarterback. Uh, Kansas loves to run the ball. They got two of the top running backs in the, in the Big 12. Oklahoma State has, they had who people expected was the best running back in all the college football coming into this season. They have not been able to run the ball, but who's to say they don't get it right by the last game of the season? Colorado's got to be vigilant when it comes to how they prepare for every single one of these games, I think they will be. I think Dion, he seems like he's got his mind right. He seems like he's coaching them up and he's getting them right. And he's not over there trying to sell the school and do this, that, and the third. He seems like he is wired right now. Warren Sapp seems like he's wired. He got that defensive line playing out of their mind, out of their mind. I wanna see them really focus on stopping the run Getting pressure on the quarterback, yes, because Texas Tech, they do love to throw the ball. But I need to see them stepping up and stopping the run this week. Shiloh Sanders got to show up. He got to show up. That's all I got. That's all I got for Colorado this week. Uh, I'm really, really happy for them. They are one of the best stories in all of college football right now. 
I think the, the, the voters would want nothing more than to get Colorado in the Big 12 championship game and in the college football playoff. I think BYU is the type of team that if they lose the Big 12 championship could maybe still make the college football playoff. So there is a path here to where everybody gets in who should get in. All the storylines are written are written in a way that really appeals to college football fans all across the country. And I think Colorado is in a great position right here to play Cinderella like you just wouldn't believe it. But they got to win out every single game. Can't afford to lose, not even one of them. None of them. Not now, one.